The next story I'm going to ask you to tell, you probably have it um, on autopilot in your head. You've been asked so much to say, but it's in relation to Darren's brother, Danny, to Danny yeah. G, and the night they tried to make a move sell. I'll tell you about that, lad. The, the more I, I've sort of looked at that incident, um, there is lads. I, I talked to an ex-gym officer. I did an interview with him. And I asked him about people and weights, Olympic weights and ever. There are very few people in prison who are problematic because of the size. Um, Danny, always been a big lad. Again, another product of the system. You know, some of these these guys don't get a chance to sort of get up and running in prison. But, you know, the, the mentality and that makes them problematic when you have to deal with them when they kick off. People are fearful of them. But but when you, if you take a step back, um, as they would say, I, I think sometimes they are stitched up. On the whole, like when you're talking about Darren and Danny, yeah? They haven't spent their whole prison life fighting the system. I think a good example would be Charlie Bronson, who's now Charles Salvador. He's changed his name. I'm sure most people, both in Ireland and, well, UK as a whole, will know or have heard of Charlie Bronson. Mm -hmm. He hasn't spent his entire prison life fighting the system yeah it's been very quiet of late however you know that's what people focus on so they never get chance to settle the reputation is always going to precede them and it's the same with danny what they need to do quite often these people will have long periods and they need to be able to settle down you know get in a prison where they get on or whatever so on the Friday night, um, he was asked to move cell. He refused. He was going in a strip cell, which is a bare cell. All you've got in it is a wooden plinth, which is a bed, nothing else, no toilet, no sink. Um, do you know what? I'm I'm not sure whether there's a window or not. I've never, I've never thought about that. But there is observation panels, so you can keep an eye on somebody and in the door is a hatch so again it's a secure hatch it's not like the healthcare it's it's a mechanical device that you lift up you can put things in and pass stuff through so in short 11 staff in full riot gear have tried to restrain him in order to move him this cell um he destroyed the staff not seriously injured him but he was playing with them you know, um, his strength and his physicality are next level. Very powerful lad. So in the end, the go asked him to move into the strip cell, yeah? Which he did. So he was compliant. He took some stuff in there. He shouldn't really have to... A strip cell is what it says. All you would have in a strip cell is the clothes you're standing in. Anyway, he took some things in there. Um, I was off on the Saturday... It became problematic on the Saturday during the day. So I got a phone call at home Saturday night asking me to go into the jail because they were going to do um, a planned intervention, which means we, we were going to be going in the cell in order to remove items. Um, I believe got a lighter and he was threatening to set the cell on fire. We've already said about cell fires, they're terrifying. So 12 staff in full PPE, riot helmets, the lot have turned up. We've had a briefing about going in the cell. Um, these are all volunteers, by the way. So I had a conversation about this incident with another member of staff who was actually involved in this incident. Because it's good sometimes to look at things from a different perspective, yeah. My take on it now, which 
on reflection now, looking back, and at the time, I never saw it like this. You've got 12 staff. We've got a lad in a strip cell. Yeah. It's three o'clock in the morning. Nobody's heard from that guy for hours. So what was problematic during the day, you know, requiring intervention, you've now heard nothing. So the other member of staff has said the same as me. You've got your staff there in case you become problematic. Why would you risk his sort of health and safety and the staff's health and safety to go into a cell at three o'clock in the morning when it's all quiet? Yeah. You've got your staff there if you need them. You know, you go through to morning, your staff can go off shift, no intervention, no paperwork, no one's at risk. But somebody decided at three o'clock that those 12 staff were going to go into that cell. Um, very big lad, very powerful lad. You know, I was quite, quite aware what we're getting ourselves into. Other people, not so much. We ended up going in the cell. Um, maybe eight or nine staff trying to hold him down. He started getting up. People have said before, nine people on one, they aren't getting up. Well, believe me. What you have to remember is that all the people who went in that cell weren't game for what was going on. If you like, it was above their pay grade. We ended up, to cut a long story short, with four of us um, sort of in, in a stand-up, sparring-type fight with Danny. It was self-preservation. Um, one of the lads caught him with a punch. He went down. Um, we were on him, and then boom, we're out of the cell. It was self-preservation, like I said. You know, 12 staff went in. It ended up four staff in the cell with just Danny. Quite terrifying, very powerful lad. Again, after, now, looking now, years later, there was no need for any of that at all. Yeah. And you have got to wonder... Whether, whether he was stitched up, some people had got it in for him. And me and the other guy who was there, he's now left the job. We come to the same conclusion at the end of the day, you know. Um, but these, these things sort of go on prisoners' records as well. So now I'm looking at it, like we've said earlier in the podcast, treating people and speaking to people in a proper manner you know, can get a positive outcome. I I look at all this incident now and it could have all, none of it should have happened really. If it had been a different set of staff in the segregation unit, I, I don't think they'd have wanted to move in Friday, it'd have kicked off or whatever. Because a lot of people like Danny, prisoners like that, they're not problematic till people do them wrong. A lot of prisoners will get on with the jail. They won't be happy with what with what you throw at them or what happens to them or whatever, but they'll take it on the chin. However, if they feel they're being, um, you know, treated badly, stitched up, whatever you want to call it, then they will react to that. Yeah. And that is what I believed happened. So, and on reflection, a lot of incidents that I was involved in in the prison service with different managers and staff would have ended up in no paperwork. They'd have been sort of, if you like, peaceful outcomes, if that makes sense. But it seems like a very over-the-top reaction to go into someone's cell at three o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? So I understand how no you need. like that. You know? Yeah, no need. But, you know, it's when you talk to other people who are thinking exactly the same as me. But at the time, you don't see that. But looking back now, because that's what I do now. I reflect on a lot of things that happened and they could have been managed in a different way. But at the end of the day, you know, not everyone's like me or whatever. So, Absolutely, yeah. 